Republican Kim Guadano's tumultuous campaign ended in a crushing loss. Outspent three to one and trailing throughout by double digits in the polls, the lieutenant governor could not evade her eight-year connection to catastrophically unpopular Governor Christie. Even a last-minute hard right turn to Trump-style topics and tactics failed. We left no stone unturned and we would not have done anything differently. Guadana lost by 13 points, but a bit stubbornly refused to blame her boss. People are talking about the Christie effect? None. I, you know what? I ran my own campaign. Her running mate spoke more freely about the political reverberations rocking New Jersey's Republican Party and resonating all the way down the ballot. This is being called a backlash against Chris Christie, I, Donald Trump. Well, you know, we knew that we were up against all odds. We were outnumbered in registrations. Where, uh, we were up against the Christie effect. We knew that from the get-go. I think right now it is it is a rejection of the of the president and the politics there. I mean, it, you know, certainly there are other factors that go into play with any race. If you look at Lieutenant Governor, I thought she ran a strong race, was underfunded, and was traditionally a very blue state anyway. This is part of a national mood here in New Jersey. So even while we had a record low turnout for the governor's race in competitive races, there was a significant enthusiasm gap that benefited Democrats. New Jersey will now be one of eight so-called trifecta states where Democrats control both houses of the legislature and the governor's office. Republicans have 26. But Jersey Democrats also boosted their legislative margins, winning two seats formerly held by Republicans Jack Cittarelli and Chris Brown. That'll give them a 28-seat majority in the assembly. Democrats also gained a Senate seat, raising that majority to 10 after Democrat Vin Gopal beat longtime Republican Jennifer Beck in the 11th district. When you have an avalanche of money, uh, it's almost, look, when, when you know how to spend someone five, seven to one, it's almost brainwash money. If you had an even, even playing field here, Jen Beck would still be a senator. A Republicans may control the legislature if they hadn't even played field of money. The legislature's most expensive race, costing a combined $20 million, pitted incumbent Democratic Senate President Steve Sweeney against an NJEA-funded Republican opponent. Sweeney won by 18 points and remains angry at the teachers' union officials. This was personal, it was a vendetta, and they wanted to teach a lesson. They wanted to be able to show the entire state of New Jersey that they control New Jersey. And if you cross them, this is what you're going to get. Well, I can tell you right now, I will stand for the taxpayers of this state every single day against million dollar lobbyists. In major mayoral races, Steve Fulop won a second term in Jersey City, and in Atlantic City, Council President Frank Gilliam beat incumbent Don Guardian. But again, this election defied the norm that all politics is local. This is about national issues, and if this mo mood prevails uh, going into the 2018 midterms, uh, there are a number of Republican congressmen here in New Jersey who should be extremely nervous. New Jersey voters also approved two ballot questions. One okays borrowing $125 million to improve libraries. The other says any money the state wins in environmental lawsuits must be spent to restore the environment. In Newark, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News.